out tonight. Um, my name is Greg Newton. We have a bevy of volunteers. We have so many that I'm going to let them introduce <laughs> themselves afterwards, but we're very happy to have their help. Uh, the Bureau is all volunteer run and staffed, so uh, that's what keeps this thing going, as well as your donations. So uh, the suggested donation is $5. If you can give more, great. If you can't give that, we still love you. Uh, but give what you can. Um, tonight's talk um, by Kyle Bella, friend of the show for a couple of years now, uh, is part of our exhibition, um, which is called The Uses of Anger. Uh, so we wanted to do an exhibition that dealt with anger and activism, uh, activism born of anger in response to a variety of injustices of which there are so many to choose. Uh, so tonight's, is gonna, tonight's talk is going to be addressing uh, activism in South Africa, LGBT activism in South Africa. Kyle's been there for five weeks, I guess. Well, I'll yeah, shut yeah, up. Yeah, I'll, I'll, talk. I'll talk about that. Um, <laughs> but if you're not already on our email list, we have a sign-up list on the bar. Um, we send out an email every Monday night every Monday and let you know about what's coming up here at the Bureau uh, and we keep a busy calendar. So with that, we'll get started. Please give it up for Kyle Bella. I just uh, wanted to start by uh, thanking the Bureau for hosting this event. Um, they had sent out an email, I think it was back in October, about this series that they were doing. Um, and I, I knew I was going to South Africa at that time because I had um, booked my flight back in March of last year. Um, but I really didn't have any idea what I was actually going to be researching. Um, so I sort of you know, sent them a message and was like, yeah, of course I want to talk about um, you know, activism in South Africa. You know, if, if I'm going to look at HIV AIDS research, people are definitely um, going to be angry and there's going to be some tie into anger. Um, and I ended up settling on talking about uh, Simon Nicoli, who was the first black gay activist to come out in South Africa um, in the late 70s and early 80s. Um, and his activism was sort of uh, pioneering at the time. Um, and I want to talk about his activism in the context of this idea of gentle anger, which I will um, bring up through uh, different um, slides and, and photographs that I encountered during my time. And I also want to tie the activism that happened in the 80s and 90s um, to the present day, hopefully to try and re-envision um, this activism for people in 2015. Um, but before I do that, if you could go to the next slide, um, I wanted to talk about um, Our Viral Lives, which is the project that um, basically spawned um, this focus on archival work. Um, and Our Viral Lives is an online website that is dedicated to people, um, mostly to people under the age of 35, to talk about sexuality and HIV AIDS. Um, and the idea is to create an online archive so people around the world have access to it. Um, if you've ever been to an archive, um, you know it's sometimes very hard to um, you know, get access to materials if you're not a researcher or um, affiliated with the university. And I thought that this would um, basically allow more people to have access to this. And the focus is on... I'm oh, sorry, is this time? Oh, uh, it should, should not be timed. Um, the, and the focus is specifically on young people because, as we know, um, they have the highest rates of new infection um, throughout the world. And uh, they are also on the you know, least amount of treatment. Um, and their stories really aren't being told in popular culture. So it seemed to make sense that somebody would um, talk about their experiences. Now you can go on to the next slide. Um, and specifically, why South Africa? Why go to a country 8,000 miles away? Um, the idea for that was the fact that 5.5 million South Africans are living with HIV right now. That's one in 10. Um, so a huge number of people are currently living with HIV. Um, on the other side, 2.9 million people are on antiretroviral treatment to suppress the virus. And that is the biggest ARV program in the entire world. Um, and in 1998, um, when Simon Nicoli died, almost nobody except the super wealthy were on treatment. So in the span of less than 20 years, um, 
millions of people have gone on treat onto treatment. So this um, transformation that has happened so quickly was something that you know was really interesting to me. How were they able to change things um, so quickly? And finally, um, South Africa has a really good amount of archival material. Um, Gay and Lesbian Memory and Action was founded in 1997, um, so it's nearly 20 years old. Um, and uh, no worries. Um, so the, it, it was um, founded 20 years ago, so they just have a real um, big depth of materials. Are those slides available online somewhere? Um, I will hopefully try and get them um, available online. I have to find a format that will allow me to host them. Thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt. Great. No worries. Okay. And you can go on to the next slide. Um, and now I want to talk about Simon Nicole, um, who was born in 1957 in Soweto. And Soweto was a township on the outskirts of Johannesburg. And townships were created by the apartheid government specifically for black people uh, to segregate them from the rest of society. So white people would not go into townships, and black people could only leave townships to go to work for white people in the center of the city. And this is really important in shaping Simon's early activism, and, and that's why I bring that up. Um, and in the 1970s, his family would move to another township, and this is where this photo is taken. It's Simon with his dog at the time in the early 1970s. You can go on to the next slide. Um, and I'm going to play a video which he talks about coming out in the early 80s. If you could start at like 1 minute and 30 seconds. If you just you go like up to the video. It, 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 no, yeah, it'll, it'll pop up. Like 1.30. It's pretty, um, pretty early. And this, he just talks about um, his own activism at the time and kind of the segregation. Between black and white activists. Um, well, I firstly started in 1982. That this was when I became aware that a uh, gay movement is needed for black people in our country. But at the time, I really didn't know how to organize uh, ourselves. I didn't know who to go to because many gay people are, in, are very um, invisible. You know, you, you cannot really know who is gay, who is not gay. You know, people are not written whether they're gay or not. And maybe I should really tell you why uh, I became so much interested on in setting up a gay organization or becoming, or becoming a member of a gay organization. Um, I looked at the way I, as a person, struggled to come out, all the fight, all the emotional I went through. And I said, hey, when I wasn't alone on that situation, or I couldn't have been alone, you know, there must be other gay people who find themselves in the same situation as I am. And at the time when I thought of becoming a member of a gay organization, um, I was already went through many difficulties in my community. Uh, well, I joined a gay organization finally in 1983. I joined Gay Association of South Africa. And a few days or a few months thereafter, I found that Black people were not really represented in it. There were few black people going to uh, Gaza functions, and the white members of that organization were very, you know, sort of ignorant. Or maybe they didn't like us, I don't know, but they really didn't have a good communication with the small membership. Um, of Gaza who happened to be black like I was. And I remember that there were lots of things which make me very unhappy about um, being a member of Gaza, or uh, things that makes me unhappy about how Gaza treated us. There's some example that I want to tell you about. 
Gaza, although it claimed that it was a uh, multiracial organization, of course, managing to have people like me in their organization, they did not really represent the demands of the black people or the needs of the black people. They did not go into the township and organize um, any function there. But instead, Gaza, uh, at the time when I was a member, they used to organize functions in places where the... Yeah, so he, he was talking about the fact that um, they would only organize um, gatherings and white-only spaces at the time. Um, and this experience would really shape his desire throughout his life to be inclusive in terms of his LGBT activism. Um, and uh, that a particular video was from uh, 1989 when he was touring in Canada. Um, 